the nation's top infectious disease expert. That's Dr. Anthony Fauci joins us now. Dr. Fauci, it's good to have you here. I know you're very busy, so we thank you for making the time. Let's start with one of the leading vaccine candidates is now on hold because of an adverse reaction from one of the volunteers. How concerning is that to you? Well, I think it's important to point out that that's the reason why you have various phases of trials to determine if, in fact, these candidates are safe. This particular candidate from the AstraZeneca company had a serious adverse event, which means you put the rest of the enrollment of individual volunteers on hold until you can work out precisely what went on. Uh, you alert the other sites to see if they see anything similar to this or related to that, and then you proceed cautiously as you go forward, making sure you're on the alert for this type of an adverse event. But it's really one of the safety valves that you have on clinical trials such as this. So it's unfortunate that it happened. Hopefully they'll work it out and be able to proceed along with the remainder of the trial. But you don't know. They need to investigate it further. How common is it? You know, it's not uncommon at all. Uh, I mean, you know, we see this generally for the most part, but you don't know until you investigate it. It's an adverse event that's related to something else that just happened to have occurred during the period of time that the clinical trial was on. But you can't presume that. You always make the presumption that it's due directly to the actual vaccine or therapeutic or whatever it is that's in the clinical trial. And that's the reason why when we say we do careful safety types of studies, this is an example of the kind of thing that you do to make sure we're dealing with a product that's safe. I remember you told us weeks ago that, you know, we're not op we're operating on coronavirus timeline, not our own. We may be over corona, but corona is not over us. So with that in mind, what are your thoughts on when we can start thinking about a vaccine? You and the president seem to have two different timelines here, and I think it's confusing for people. Well, well, I hope it's not, but, but let me try and see if we could clarify it a bit. Yeah. I have said from the very beginning, given the way the trials have emerged now, and they are really on time, there are three candidates. One of them is the one that we're talking about this morning that now happens to be on hold that's in a phase three trial, namely an advanced trial involving tens of thousands of people to determine if it's safe and effective. The projection that I've made, and I'll stick by it, is that we would likely get an answer if this is safe and effective by the end of the year, likely November, December. Is it possible, is it conceivable that we could find out earlier, let's say October? Certainly that's possible. I think it's unlikely, but you can't rule it out. I think the more likely scenario is that we will know by the end of this calendar year and hopefully we'll be able to start vaccinations in earnest as we begin 2020. Many people are concerned, Dr. Fauci, that the, the race to get the vaccine has become very, politi uh, very politicized. Listen, you had pharmaceutical companies coming out yesterday saying, listen, safety comes first. You don't need to worry. Are you concerned that it's now become very politicized? People don't know. Is it safe to take it? When is it what? safe to take it? Well, first of all, obviously, it's no secret to anyone that we're dealing in a very intense political atmosphere. But I think the issue that came out the other day, I believe it was yesterday mm -hmm. or the day before, when the companies made the agreement that they would not proceed to try and get, for example, an emergency use authorization unless they were convinced that the vaccine was safe and effective. I think that's a good thing. There are also a bunch of safety valves along the way. For example, there are independent data and safety monitoring boards that look at the data intermittently on a regular basis to determine just what the status of the trial is. And when the decision is made whether or not you're going to give an EUA, which is an emergency emergency use authorization or even approve the vaccine, there are also advisory boards that you, rule, that you run this by. So there's really a lot of transparency in that. So I do hope and I believe there won't be a politicization of this. There may be a political atmosphere, but I don't think we're going to have a politicization of the actual decisions regarding a vaccine. Well, I sure hope so. You know, but it is a very political climate, as you know. The president continues to hold these massive rallies where people are not wearing masks, including the president himself. When you see that, what do you think? Is it frustrating to you as, a, as an expert on this? 
Well, yes, it is, and I've said that often. Yeah. Uh, that situation is we we want to set an example because we know we know that when you do four or five typical kind of public health measures, masks, physical distance, avoiding crowds, making sure you do most things outdoors versus indoors, those are the kind of things that turn around surges and also prevent us from getting surges. So I certainly would like to see a universal wearing of masks. Dr. Fauci, really good to see you. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay sane. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.